Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video from our channel, Who Died Today America. In this video, we'll be highlighting American celebrities who have passed away in the last few days, along with other notable figures from around the world. Before we proceed, we kindly ask you to show your love and support by giving this video a like. It means a lot to us. Thank you. Now let's begin. John Robinson, who passed away at the age of 89 on November 11th, was a towering figure in American football, renowned for his success at both the collegiate and professional levels. A legendary coach best known for his tenures at the University of Southern California and with the Los Angeles Rams, Robinson's impact on the sport spanned over four decades, touching countless players, coaches, and fans. Born on July 25, 1935, in Chicago, Illinois, Robinson's path in football began on the field as a talented tight end for the University of Oregon. It was here that his passion for the game took root and ultimately led him into coaching, where he would achieve monumental success. Starting as an assistant coach at Oregon and then at USC, Robinson quickly established himself as a master strategist with a keen understanding of the game. His time as offensive coordinator at USC under coach John McKay laid the foundation for what would become one of college football's most celebrated careers. Robinson first took the helm at USC in 1976, leading the Trojans to remarkable achievements, including three Rose Bowl titles and a national championship in 1978. Known for his run-heavy offense and fierce competitiveness, he coached some of USC's most iconic players and created memories that solidified USC's place among college football elites. His triumphant return to USC in 1993 showed his enduring commitment to the program, and he further enriched USC's football legacy with three additional bowl victories, including the 1996 Rose Bowl. Robinson's success extended to the NFL, where he served as head coach of the Los Angeles Rams from 1983 to 1991. Under his guidance, the Rams reached the playoffs six times and twice advanced to the NFC Championship game. Known for developing star players like Eric Dickerson and fostering a resilient running game, Robinson left a lasting mark on the franchise, guiding them through one of their most successful eras. Beyond his coaching achievements, Robinson was admired for his dedication to his players and his loyalty to the sport. A mentor and a visionary, he helped launch the careers of future coaching greats and inspired generations of athletes with his wisdom and humility. His later roles at UNLV in high school coaching and as a senior consultant with LSU demonstrated his unwavering passion for football until his final years. John Robinson's legacy is a testament to his devotion, resilience, and deep love for the game. He will be remembered as one of football's true legends, a man who not only shaped the game, but also enriched the lives of everyone fortunate enough to be part of his journey. Ella Jenkins, who passed away at the age of 100 on November 9th, was a remarkable singer-songwriter whose influence in children's music spanned more than six decades. Often celebrated as the First Lady of the Children's Folk Song, Jenkins brought a unique and heartfelt approach to the genre, shaping the way music is used to teach and inspire young minds. Her dedication to music, education, and cultural appreciation created a legacy that enriched the lives of countless children, families, and educators around the world. Born in St. Louis, Missouri, and raised in Chicago, Jenkins grew up in a vibrant musical environment that celebrated diversity. Influenced by the gospel music in her neighborhood, blues from her family, and call and response from artists like Cab Calloway, Jenkins was driven by a love for music that transcended cultural boundaries. Her education in sociology and child psychology at San Francisco State University gave her a unique foundation, which she used to connect with children on a deep level promoting music as both a tool for learning and a bridge to greater cultural understanding. Jenkins's career began in Chicago, where her talents were quickly recognized, leading her to release her first album, Call and Response, Rhythmic Group Singing, in 1957 with Folkways Records. 
Her signature call-and-response style, which encouraged audience participation, became a hallmark of her performances. Her songs, often bilingual and drawn from diverse cultural traditions, made children feel seen, heard, and empowered. Her album, Multicultural Children's Songs, remains one of the most beloved releases on Smithsonian folkways, a testament to her vision of inclusivity and joy in music. Jenkins performed and taught around the world, making appearances on beloved children's programs like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and Sesame Street. Her workshops and concerts were more than just performances. They were interactive experiences that helped children and adults alike appreciate music's universal language. Through her songs, she conveyed lessons of empathy, collaboration, and self-expression, encouraging children to find joy and confidence in their voices. For her pioneering contributions, Jenkins received many accolades, including a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 2004. Her dedication to music as an educational tool, her unshakable belief in the power of children's voices, and her advocacy for cultural awareness and unity will live on through her recordings and the countless lives she touched. Ella Jenkins's voice may have fallen silent, but her songs and her message will resonate for generations to come. Terry Garr, who passed away at the age of 79, was a beloved American actress whose wit, charm, and unforgettable performances made her a cherished figure in film and television. Known for her comic genius and roles in iconic films of the 1970s and 80s, Garr was celebrated for her ability to capture complex characters with humor and warmth. Born in Los Angeles on December 11, 1944, Gar grew up in a family immersed in the entertainment industry. Her early training in ballet and dance set the stage for her future career, leading to roles as a background dancer in several Elvis Presley films before she found her voice as an actress. After studying at the Lee Strasberg Theater Institute in New York, she began to appear in small television roles making her breakthrough as a comedic actress in Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein, 1974. Her comedic timing, combined with her ability to embody characters both strong and vulnerable, made her unforgettable as the quirky Inga in Young Frankenstein and the devoted wife in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, 1977. Gar's career soared in the 1980s, with standout roles in Oh God and The Black Stallion, but it was her Academy Award-nominated performance in Tootsie, 1982, that solidified her status as one of Hollywood's most talented actresses. As Sandy, a struggling actress in Tootsie, Gar balanced humor and heartbreak with ease, leaving an indelible mark on audiences. Throughout her career, she worked with legendary directors like Francis Ford Coppola, Steven Spielberg, and Martin Scorsese, bringing life to each role with her unique mix of intelligence and comedic flair. Beyond the screen, Gar was a frequent guest on Late Night with David Letterman, where her candid and humorous conversations with Letterman showcased her natural wit and made her a favorite with audiences. In 2002, Gar publicly shared her diagnosis of multiple sclerosis, becoming a dedicated advocate for others facing the disease. She served as a national ambassador for the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, working to bring awareness and support to those affected by MS. Despite her health struggles, Gar's resilience and positivity inspired many. Terry Gar's legacy is one of laughter, strength, and authenticity. Her roles touched millions, and her advocacy left a lasting impact. She will be remembered as a true comedic legend and a cherished friend to all who knew her. Taylor Rousseau Grigg, who passed away at the young age of 25, was a beloved TikTok personality known for her radiant smile, kind spirit, and inspiring outlook on life despite personal struggles. With 1.4 million followers, Taylor shared glimpses of her daily life, her strong faith, her love for her husband Cameron, and her cherished country lifestyle. Taylor touched many hearts through her candid reflections on her health battles, which she faced with remarkable resilience and bravery. 
After her marriage in August 2023, Taylor began experiencing unexplained health issues, a journey she courageously shared with her followers. Her openness resonated deeply, especially as she expressed the challenges of adapting to a diagnosis that changed her life. Though she chose not to disclose specific details of her condition, her transparency about the emotional toll and physical limitations she endured brought comfort and solidarity to countless people dealing with their own health challenges. Taylor's strength in the face of adversity made her a beacon of hope, showing others that, even in hard times, there can be moments of joy and grace. Her husband, Cameron, shared the heartbreaking news of her passing, honoring her as a light who brought joy to everyone around her, despite enduring more pain in one year than many experience in a lifetime. In her final act of selflessness, Taylor's organs will be donated to pediatric patients, a fitting legacy for someone who lived to bring kindness to others. As her family noted, Taylor would have been deeply touched to know her life would help save others, especially children. Taylor's life may have been brief, but her impact was profound. She leaves behind a legacy of kindness, resilience, and faith. Cameron, who was by her side throughout her illness, expressed his gratitude for the support of her followers and assured them that Taylor is now free from pain, dancing in heaven's light. Her influence will live on in the lives she touched, both through her content and her final generous gift of life to those in need. Taylor will be remembered as a beautiful soul who faced life's challenges with grace and dignity. Though her journey on this earth was short, her spirit will continue to inspire and uplift those who loved her and followed her story. Dikembe Mutombo, who passed away at the age of 58, was a towering figure in both the basketball world and humanitarian circles. Widely regarded as one of the greatest defensive players in NBA history, Mutombo's 7-foot, 2-inch frame and fierce commitment on the court earned him the nickname Mount Mutombo. His signature finger wag after blocking a shot became an iconic gesture, symbolizing his unyielding tenacity. Over 18 NBA seasons, he played for teams like the Denver Nuggets, Atlanta Hawks, and Houston Rockets, earning four NBA Defensive Player of the Year awards and eight All-Star appearances. His dedication to the sport was honored with the retirement of his number 55 jersey by both the Nuggets and Hawks, and his enshrinement into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame, Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 2015. Born in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Mutombo came to the United States with dreams of becoming a doctor. Fate led him to basketball instead, where he quickly became a defensive powerhouse at Georgetown University. His journey from Kinshasa to the NBA not only highlighted his athleticism, but also his profound commitment to his Congolese roots and to making a difference beyond basketball. Mutombo's legacy reaches far beyond his on-court achievements. He founded the Dikembe Mutombo Foundation in 1997 to improve living conditions in the DRC, where he made remarkable strides in health care, including opening the Biamba Marie Mutombo Hospital in Kinshasa, named after his beloved mother. This facility provides critical medical services to communities that previously lacked access to modern health care. His humanitarian work earned him numerous honors, including the J. Walter Kennedy Citizenship Award and an invitation to a State of the Union address as a guest of President George W. Bush. A naturalized American citizen and multilingual ambassador of goodwill, Mutombo championed many causes, from Special Olympics to polio vaccination efforts in Africa. His life was a testament to the power of using one's platform for positive change, demonstrating that greatness lies not only in achievements, but also in giving back. Dikembe Mutombo leaves behind a profound legacy of resilience, compassion, and global impact. He will be remembered not just as an NBA legend, but as a humanitarian giant who uplifted countless lives, both in his homeland and across the world. Connie Chumi, who passed away at the age of 72, was a celebrated South African actress and filmmaker 
whose talent graced screens and stages across the globe. Known for her roles in films like Black Panther and Black as King, as well as iconic South African television series like Zone 14, Rhythm City, and Gamora, Chume became a revered figure in both the South African and international entertainment landscapes. Born on June 5, 1952, in Wellcome, South Africa, Chiume's early life and career choices reflected her dedication to making a difference. She initially pursued a degree in teaching before her love for the arts drew her to the stage. After spending time abroad performing in musicals across Europe and the Middle East, Chum returned to South Africa at the height of the country's transformation, marking the start of her remarkable acting journey. Her roles in productions such as Sigudi Sinyasi and Incom, Edla Yodwa, helped establish her as a talent of depth and versatility. In the years that followed, Chumi would go on to earn multiple accolades, including South African Film and Television Awards, SAFTAs, for her work in Zone 14 and Rhythm City. In 2022, she was honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award at the SAFTAs, a recognition of her enduring impact on the industry. Her role as Mam Santo Malefi in Gamora showcased her ability to embody complex characters that resonated deeply with audiences. On the international stage, she became widely recognized as Zawavari, an elder in Black Panther and its sequel Wakanda Forever, cementing her place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and introducing her talent to a global audience. Beyond her achievements on screen, Chumi was known for her warmth and commitment to her community. She was not only a dedicated actress, but a role model and inspiration to many aspiring artists in South Africa. Her kindness, resilience, and powerful presence made her beloved by fans and colleagues alike. A devoted mother of four, Chium's life was a testament to strength, grace, and determination. She leaves behind a legacy of unforgettable performances and a lasting impact on the arts. Her work in film, television, and theater will continue to inspire, and she will be remembered as a true luminary who contributed immeasurably to South African culture and to storytelling around the world. Erica Ash, who passed away at the age of 47, was an immensely talented actress, comedian, singer, and model who brought joy and laughter to audiences across the world. Known for her versatility and vivacious spirit, Erica became a household name through her work on the sketch comedy shows Mad TV and The Big Gay Sketch Show. Later, she endeared herself to fans with her role on the Stars sitcom Survivor's Remorse, showcasing her ability to blend humor with heartfelt performances. Born on September 19, 1977, in Florida to parents who served in the U.S. military, Erica's life was filled with new places and cultures, shaping her broad perspective and adaptability. Her family's travels took her to places as far as Germany, and she developed a love for the arts while attending a performing arts school in Atlanta. Initially planning to become a doctor, Erica studied pre-medicine at Emory University. But a trip to Japan changed her life's path, leading her to a career in entertainment, where she began as a backup singer and runway model. From there, she set her sights on acting, following her heart with an unstoppable drive and passion. Erica's comedic talents flourished on the big gay sketch show, where her memorable characters, like the unapologetically loud and hilarious LaTanya, left a lasting impression on viewers. She joined the cast of Mad TV in 2008, becoming one of only a few African-American women to appear on the show. Erica's ability to portray a wide range of characters with wit and humor made her an audience favorite as she fearlessly tackled roles that broke stereotypes and showcased her comedic brilliance. Her work in comedy was only one side of her talent. Erica also displayed remarkable depth as an actress in Survivor's Remorse, capturing the complexities of her character in a way that resonated deeply with fans. Her journey from Broadway shows like The Lion King to the silver screen was a testament to her dedication and versatility, and she inspired countless others to follow their passions. 
Throughout her life, Erica Ash radiated positivity, humor, and resilience, uplifting everyone around her. Her legacy lives on in the laughter she brought to her fans, the trail she blazed for future comedians and actresses, and the countless lives she touched with her warmth and talent. She will be remembered not only as a gifted performer, but as a truly remarkable person who encouraged everyone to embrace their dreams wholeheartedly. Geneviève Grad, who passed away at the age of 80 on November 8th, was a beloved French actress who captivated audiences with her charm, elegance, and talent. Known widely for her role as Nicole Cruchot in the classic Gendarme of Saint-Tropez series, Geneviève brought to life the role of Ludovic Cruchot's daughter, acting alongside the legendary Louis de Funès. Her work in these films, spanning from 1964 to 1968, helped cement her status as a cherished figure in French cinema, with her performances filled with wit and a timeless grace. Throughout her career, Genevieve appeared in numerous films and television series, showcasing her versatility and commitment to her craft. Among her memorable roles were those in Flash Love and Liberté Sexuelle, in which she starred alongside Paul Guerre. Beyond her work on the big screen, she was a familiar face on French television in the 1960s and 1970s, with each role further establishing her as a celebrated actress of her time. Her presence on screen was unforgettable, leaving a mark on audiences who were drawn to her sincerity and depth. Outside of her acting career, Genevieve led a rich personal life. She was a proud mother, having a son with Igor Bogdanov, and later found companionship in her marriage to Jean-René André-Yvon Guillaume in 1993. She enjoyed a quiet life in Vendôme, surrounded by the beauty of Loire-et-Cher. Her life off-screen reflected the same grace she exuded in her roles, dedicated to her family, her friends, and her passions. Genevieve's passing from cancer at a clinic in La Chaussée Saint-Victor marks the end of an era, and she will be deeply missed by fans, colleagues, and loved ones alike. She leaves behind a legacy of work that continues to bring joy and inspiration to those who watch her films. Her contribution to French cinema remains profound, and her spirit lives on in every role she played. Genevieve Grad will be remembered as an actress of rare elegance and an individual who embraced life with warmth, strength, and a radiant charm that will not be forgotten. Jeanette Charles, who passed away at the age of 96, leaves behind a legacy of charm, talent, and dedication. Widely known as the Queen's most famous look-alike, Charles captivated audiences across the globe with her uncanny resemblance to Queen Elizabeth II. Her extraordinary likeness to the monarch earned her a unique place in entertainment, becoming a beloved figure who brought joy and a touch of royalty to her fans. Born in Marylebone, London in 1927, Jeanette Charles discovered her striking resemblance to Queen Elizabeth II as a young girl, yet she faced initial challenges in pursuing an acting career due to this resemblance. Unable to afford training at RADA, Charles initially worked as an au pair in the United States, where she met her husband, Ken Charles. Their marriage took them to various corners of the world before settling back in the United Kingdom in the late 1960s. Her career in impersonation took off serendipitously after a commissioned portrait of her was mistakenly believed to be that of the Queen at the Royal Academy. This led to numerous offers to portray the Queen in advertisements, films, and even personal appearances at events and trade shows. Charles meticulously studied the Queen's voice and demeanor, becoming an expert in both her appearance and character. From roles in comedy classics like The Naked Gun and National Lampoon's European Vacation, to films such as Austin Powers in Goldmember, her portrayal of the Queen brought laughter and delight to many. A devoted monarchist, Charles was highly selective in her roles, maintaining a respectful portrayal of the Queen throughout her career. Her dedication to this integrity was well known. She declined offers she felt could tarnish the Queen's image, including a famous refusal to pose for Playboy. 
Her commitment and respect for her role as a lookalike mirrored her genuine admiration for the royal family. Jeanette Charles retired in 2014, leaving a memorable mark on popular culture. Her life's work reflected her passion for bringing joy to others while honoring the figure she portrayed. Her humor, elegance, and dedication will be fondly remembered by her family, friends, and fans alike. Jeanette Charles leaves behind not only a remarkable career, but a legacy of grace and joy that continues to warm the hearts of all who remember her. Breaking news of the day. News 1. William H. Macy, beloved for his role in Shameless, recently opened up about the physical and emotional challenges he faced while filming the 1998 movie Pleasantville. Macy portrayed George Parker, a character grappling with sudden changes in his seemingly perfect 1950s life. In a memorable scene shot in chilly Malibu, Macy was drenched in rain while delivering an intense performance. Recalling the moment, Macy shared, I was soaked immediately and screaming, Where's my dinner? It turned into King Lear. He described being emotionally overwhelmed, kneeling and crying out with unexpected intensity. However, when Pleasantville premiered, Macy discovered that much of his powerful performance had been cut down to a brief line, a decision made by director Gary Ross. Despite this, Macy considers the experience profound, especially a pivotal scene with Joan Allen's character, Betty, that symbolized his character's transformation. He recalled how rehearsing this scene unexpectedly brought him to tears, leading to an entire day of raw emotion on set. Reflecting on the experience, Macy called it a unique and transformative moment in his career, demonstrating his dedication and the emotional depth he brings to his roles. News 2. Richard Allen, the prime suspect in the widely followed Delphi case, has been found guilty in connection with the tragic 2017 deaths of Liberty German and Abigail Williams. The two teenagers were last seen on a popular hiking trail in Delphi, Indiana, and their case remained unsolved for over five years, capturing national attention. Allen, 52, was arrested in 2022, more than five years after the incident. A video found on Liberty's phone, showing a man walking on a bridge, had been a crucial piece of evidence that led investigators to Allen. In court, Allen showed little reaction as the verdict was read, according to CNN. He faces a potential 130-year prison sentence, with sentencing set for December 20th. Throughout the trial, Allen maintained his innocence, with his defense team pointing to a theory involving a pagan group. Despite these claims, authorities did not find evidence to support this angle, and Allen was held as the sole person responsible. As the community awaits the final sentencing, this case serves as a reminder of the persistent efforts to bring justice for Liberty and Abigail.